Welcome to Get the Balance Right, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs and firm owners looking to grow their business in a healthy, sustainable way. I'm your host, Heather Zeitzwolf. I'm a CPA and I serve this community with coaching and profit advising. Please join me as I talk with leaders in digital media, branding, advertising, design, marketing, and SEO. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Get the Balance Right podcast. On today's show, my guest is Charlotte Chipperfield. She is the founder and CEO of Chipperfield Media. She's also the host of the Holistic Marketing Podcast, so maybe you've heard her before. I discovered Charlotte because she is also a certified benefit corporation for good business. In this episode, we talk about that, and we dive into her holistic marketing system that she developed. And... She is a salmonier. I probably didn't say that right. Salmonier. Salmonier. Anyways, however you say it, that's what she is. All right. Here's my delightful conversation with Charlotte. Charlotte, welcome to my podcast. I'm so excited to have you on my podcast today. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, certainly. I'm a big fan of your podcast. Would you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself and also your podcast? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Charlotte Chipperfield, and my company's Chipperfield Media. And I ultimately consider myself to be a marketing success catalyst, which is really helping entrepreneurs or those building their personal brands to really get very intentional and strategic with their marketing, but also root their marketing into their brand values and their core values. And from there, they're able to create not only intentional path forward, but it makes everything more systematic and you can even translate your core values into content. My goal is really to help people create a plug and play intentional marketing strategy without forgoing their sanity, which we probably all want so that we can really focus on delivering what we do best. And I do have the Holistic Marketing Podcast, which has been such a fun creative outlet for me. I have over the years of being an entrepreneur, I think there's so many pieces that come to it. And, and sometimes I talk about it being really a, a master's degree in personal development. And just as I have a holistic approach to marketing, where I think it's important to be looking at all the pieces of your business and making sure that your marketing isn't isolated from all those activities. I also think that's really important to do for us personally as entrepreneurs and business leaders to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves as whole people. That's been fun for me to really explore all these topics of what really goes into making ourselves whole and improving ourselves and how do we manage anxiety or how do we find more joy and ease in our business? So I've been exploring all of those topics over on the Holistic Marketing Podcast. And then I drop in a lot of marketing tips as well. But it's definitely for those who are building a business or want to start a business. It's got great resources and amazing interviews. On your podcast, you talked about purpose. And that's one of those things that I really believe that as business owners, at least the business owners that I like to work with, have a greater purpose. So it's not just about profit. It's also about people, planet. And then purpose, I guess, is the fourth one, right? Hey there, this is Heather. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And if you are, if you wouldn't mind please hit the subscribe button now. That way you'll never miss an episode. All right, now back to the podcast. Can you explain a little bit about how you pull in this whole holistic approach to marketing and how that kind of interweaves with the entrepreneur's purpose? Absolutely. I think when a lot of people think about marketing, they think about jumping in and just starting to post on social media or to do their email marketing. And I actually back it out like two steps before you even jump into the doing. And it really starts with understanding your purpose and your why. My first section, you work with me or take my course, is all about really understanding and defining your why behind what you're doing, but then also what are your core values that support that? And I use the why and purpose a little interchangeably, but I like to think of it as a crown that you wear. And so you can dress it up however you want, but it's this crown that sits on your head so that you're always connected to it. And so if you ever forget it or need to reconnect to it, you can literally just reach up, touch your crown and remember why you're doing what you're doing. Because I think when we face adversity or struggles, it can be really hard to know what direction to go in. And I think when you can anchor back in your purpose and stay connected, to it, 
if it be through a fictional crown on your head or if you write your purpose or why on your wall so you can see it every morning when you sit down to your computer. That, I think, allows you to remember why you're doing what you're doing. And then I think it helps you make better decisions in your business and in your marketing to make sure that you're not just doing things because they're shiny objects and they look good, but you're really able to be strategic and make sure that how you're spending your time is helping you move forward. I love that analogy of the crown. That is so cool. I've never heard that before. That must be something that you just made up yourself. I love that. Yeah, I think it comes from my British roots. <laughs> so yeah, I made it up because I was like, I just want to talk about crowns and pretend I'm wearing one. <laughs> That's awesome. I think mine would be jeweled and would definitely have glitter and some fun fur and probably some radical buttons too. I like yes, to wear buttons. I love that. Yes, mine has lots of glitter as well. You have a multi-step marketing approach. Well, I'd like to dive into it, but can you just explain the framework of it first? Yeah, absolutely. So the framework I call the holistic marketing system. And the best analogy I have is actually for an orange. If you think about an orange, so there's three components I pull out of the orange. So if you think about the peel, you have this kind of harder external peel that's keeping everything together. And that peel actually represents your purpose, your why, your core values. And then when you cut into the orange, you've got all the different slices. So I like to think of each slice as a marketing activity. So one slice might be your Facebook page, one might be your Instagram, one might be your email marketing, one might be the freebie on your website. And so you have all these pieces sitting in there that you are engaging with when it comes to marketing. And then the third piece is actually the pith. So the pith is what connects all of the pieces, that spongy thing. I spend way too much time peeling off all the things because I hate eating. (laughs) But the pith really holds together all the pieces of your marketing. So it's your strategy. So it holds together all the pieces that then connects to that outer peel of your purpose and why and your values. I use that as a visual representation for what I call are the three F's of marketing. So that's when then the holistic marketing system, we walk through each of those stages. So we start with the foundation, which is really defining what is your peel? What does that look like? And then from there, we go into the framework, which is what are the slices going to be inside and why are we going to be doing those? And then the third piece is that strategy piece of, okay, we are going to be posting on Instagram. How often are we posting? What kind of content are we posting? What hashtags are we using? So it gets really granular. So again, starting at this bigger 10,000 foot view and then getting really granular into the execution steps. You mentioned that you have a course and that you also work with clients. How do you integrate this framework? Is this a course that someone can go through with the three Fs or how how does this all work? Yeah, that's a great question. (laughs) So yes, there's two paths to take. If you want to go through the exact process with me one-on-one, that's an option. Otherwise, if you want to do the self-paced course, same content, just through me on video instead of me live, although I am often answering questions within the course, you can post questions and I can support you along the way. But either way, it's the same process. What makes it a little bit different is I talk about in that the foundation part about creating your brand messaging. So not only do we anchor into your purpose and your why, but then we're looking at who is your ideal audience? How do we define that? And then how do you use your brand messaging to bridge those two? So if you work with me one-on-one, I do a lot more of that copywriting for you. You have all those assets that you can use in your marketing materials. You can redo the copy on your website. And it's just making sure we're using the right keywords and speaking to the transformation you offer your clients and customers and making sure your presence online is very consistent so that people aren't confused. Because I always say that confused customers don't buy. So if they're getting a very different experience on Instagram than your website... And your email marketing, and those people are most likely to get confused and go elsewhere. Two paths to take. You cover all the same content. You just get a little bit more of me when you work one-on-one and more copywriting, but I still give you the skills and ideas and framework for how to create that on your own as well. So one's more of a DIY type thing. And then the other one, they're creating some of the stuff alongside of you. Yeah. the, The first two phases, the clients are more involved. And then the third piece is really me going away and doing the marketing strategy and then coming back and presenting that. The first two pieces, I think it's really important for entrepreneurs or business leaders to be involved because I can't define your core values for you. I can help you refine them and how you define them and how that's going to show up in all of your communications. But I really don't feel like that's my role to define that for you in your business. Hey, this is Heather Zeitzwolf. If you are an entrepreneur who is serious about wanting to make a positive impact on the planet, then I have a program for you. It's called the People, Planet, Profit Roadmap. It's a three-month intensive program for entrepreneurs who want to be more focused on their triple bottom line. 
the program will guide you to make your business more sustainable and will develop an action plan to empower you as a conscious leader. If you are interested in this program, go down to the show notes and you'll find a link to set up a discovery call with me, Heather. All right, now back to the show. In one of your podcasts, you were talking about how, and I think it was the same one about purpose, how your social media should reflect your purpose. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around that one because I, when I post, I'm terrible at posting. I post whatever I'm doing, like it's, I got a new podcast or I just, I have a new service or whatever. I need to work on mine. How do you weave in your purpose into that? So one of the tools I use is actually the core values. So what I encourage people to do is to get usually about four core values. If you can define four that you have, And then when I actually use those to translate into your content pillars, one of my core values is intentionality. So I will often post like once a week about intentionality. And the next week I'm talking about what does it mean to me to live a holistic life and run a holistic business. So essentially, once you have these four core values defined, they then become your content pillars. So then let's say maybe you just want to post once a week on Instagram. So then you literally have four posts, one for each week of the month. Same thing, if you want to post twice a month, then you're going to post from each content pillar twice a month. It helps you not only connect to who you are as a company, but it also reiterates that messaging to your followers. And there's actually a brand that I love who does this really well. It's just, they're the non-dairy products or no one's had their cheese. Um, it's amazing, but they do a really good job. Their core values are viviality, which is one I really love. So it's connecting with other people. They talk a lot about integrity too. They talk about animal ethics. And then they also talk about artistry. So they're making sure, you know, the vegan cheeses can make a beautiful cheese board just like any other cheeses. And if you look at their Instagram, they actually rotate through those four a lot. They're talking about animal ethics and posting cute cow photos. They're talking about connecting with the people you love. Um, They talk about integrity, both in the quality of their product, but also Um, I think they're a certified B company. So they talk a lot about what that means as well. Once you have those core values, I think it makes it a lot easier for you to understand the kind of content you can post because it not only relates and reflects your company, but then it will attract the right followers who are connecting and resonate with that message. And then it also takes away that overwhelm of, oh my God, what do I post? I haven't posted in like two weeks. So it gives you a little bit more of a roadmap where you can rinse and repeat and just think about these are the four different categories I want to be posting from. And then how can I make this you and fresh each month? Charlotte, this is breakthrough information for me. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it just definitely grounds in a lot and it makes it way less overwhelming. And yes, you can still sell and post about new services. And I, that's my advice too, is to kind of use the 80-20 rule. So use 80% of your content could be value or conversation driven because it is social media, right? It's not there to be a sales channel. It's there to engage and connect with other people and build relationships. And then the other 20%, you can invite people to come join your newsletter or sign up for a wait list for your next program or to come work with you. So I think it's, you can incorporate all of those pieces, but it's just being again, very intentional and thinking again, you're there to build relationships on social media first and foremost. I think I'm going to start sharing vegan recipes. Yes. <laughs> it's, that's a core part of me is being vegan. I think I'm going to start doing that. You've really inspired me. <laughs> ah, it's always worth testing. That's the thing. It's like testing and learning is, is a part of marketing. I wish I had all the answers without the testing and learning, but that is a big piece of it. And I think also like people want to work with you for who you are. And if you can connect with someone over great yummy recipes, and then that leads to a potential work relationship. What a fun way to do that. Let's go back to your orange analogy. I'd like to dive into that more. Yeah. So I think we talked a little bit about this the foundation, which is the peel. So you're spending, that's the first piece of that. So then the second piece is really understanding your, who your customer is, and that's really going to help where to show up. So if your customers are a certain age, maybe they're like 25 to 35 and they spend time shopping online and they love Instagram, you're probably going to spend a lot more of your time creating strategy around Instagram than you are something like LinkedIn. Making sure you're really clear on who your audience is and where they're showing up will help you define what are the slices within the orange. But for the most part, I think when it comes to digital marketing, there's definitely you want to have some sort of social presence don't have to be on every single platform. Like it, I think that was a, a sentiment when 
the platforms were first created, but that's no longer true. It's really about, you know, you can just pick one, do it really well. But again, making sure you're picking the one where your audience is most active. And then if you're doing email marketing as well, that might be another slice. I'd always recommend if you can try and move some of your followers from social over to your email list, that's great because you do not own your social media profiles. You do own your email list. If Instagram were to disappear tomorrow, do you have a way of still connecting with your most loyal followers? So once you really know who your audience is, you know who you are as a company, that's when you can really start to define which are the the channels you're going to be on. And it might be that your orange inside only has four really thick, juicy slices. It's not about packing it with as many activities as possible. Another piece of holistic marketing is really being honest with your own bandwidth and your own resources. Yes, it might be nice to be in all of the places and doing all of the activities, but it's really only four hours to dedicate a week to marketing. How are you going to spend those four hours? And the other side of it too is like, what is your overall budget? You know, are you going to have a budget for running ads or... Um, partnering with influencers or whatever that might look like. Maybe it's even a budget to have a graphic designer helping you design things. So I always invite people also just to get really honest with what their bandwidth and resources are now. And then you can always plan to grow and expand in the future as we do with our businesses. But it just, the more you can be honest with that, I think the less we're going to get burnt out on marketing or fall into that stop start situation where it's like you're energized and excited and then you're not sure if it's working. So you just kind of stop doing it. And so I think that's something that can really slow down a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah, so that's kind of defining that the slice is inside. And then the pith, the strategy that holds it all together is your master document that tells you how often you're going to be posting, what your email looks like, helping you to plan out the content for the year too. So if you're going to send monthly newsletters, like how much of that you plan for ahead of time. With ads, if you're going to be running ads, what's, what's your target demographic? What does that look like? What's your budget? What do the ads look like? So it's getting really strategic about what you're going to do, when and where. Cool. And do you work with a particular niche? What type of folks do you work with? Yeah, I work a lot with women entrepreneurs, so okay. mainly in women entrepreneurs. I've been working a little bit more with women who are leaving the corporate world and then wanting to retire being their own boss. So that's been really fun working with them and just getting them out of that corporate mindset and into the entrepreneur mindset. But generally, it's, it's solo entrepreneurs or people trying to build a personal brand if they're trying to build thought leadership. Um, those are ideal people for me to be working with. It's cool. And I was looking at your LinkedIn background and you have quite the extensive background in wine, including, are you a sommelier? Did I say yeah. that right? <laughs> sommelier. Wow. Yes, I know. In my previous life, I uh, was in the wine industry for almost 10 years. Started as a harvest intern and then making wine in Sonoma and then moved into more of the hospitality side. Have major respect for what winemakers do, but it's a grueling job. I found I liked drinking and talking about it and writing about it a lot more. I moved into the more the hospitality side, ran tasting rooms, uh, also worked in restaurants as a sommelier. And then at that time I was starting, I had a wine blog called The Wine Key. And that's where I was writing about wine and having so much fun with that. And that's actually what Chipperfield Media used to be. <laughs> so after working on the hospitality side, I actually moved into marketing. So my last job that I had before starting Chipperfield Media was working for a company where we managed the wine clubs for the New York Times, William Sonoma, the Washington Post, really got my teeth into digital marketing and what that looked like. And I felt like if you can learn to sell wine online, you can almost sell anything. <laughs> and so at the time, while I was working that job, the wine key was also expanding and I was doing a little bit of marketing consulting for some winemakers I knew. And then I was also teaching wine classes. So when I left that last job, I was doing wine consulting and teaching wine classes, which eventually evolved into me working outside of the wine industry because a lot of what I was doing in the framework works for uh, businesses across multiple industries. And then I also stopped teaching wine classes um, and just really focused on what is now Chipperfield Media and creating this marketing framework. Wow. We are both certified with Benefit Corporations for Good. Can you talk a little bit about how you got certified and what that certification means to you? Absolutely. I think for me, specifically, I talked about some of my background, like some of those jobs I had were not my favorite because I always felt like there was a better way to do business. I felt the more that people were so just focused on sales, it not only took the joy out of the job, but it was just 
I always felt like there was something bigger behind a lot of the brands I work for, but like that sentiment got lost along the way. I've always felt like when I started my own business, I really wanted to be committed to something that was just bigger than me making sales or what I do in the day to day. I think it's really important that companies are thinking about the triple bottom line of people, profit, and planet, especially as we're now we're seeing climate change is real. It's happening. It's shifting. And I think ultimately business is to add value into the world as much as we can also think about how we can nurture the ecosystem that is around us, I think is so important. That's why I was really excited about the Benefit Corporation for Good certification because it gave me that stamp of approval for what was going on in my head. (laughs) It was also an external approval. I've always loved the B Corp certification too, but for me as like a one woman show, that was just such a... I don't want to say aggressive certification, but it's a very invasive. I think you have to calculate your carbon footprint for the year, which I was like, I don't even know if that's (laughs) worth calculating for me. So just things like that. But I still believed behind the philosophy. So this was, I always call it like a baby B Corp um, certification. And I just felt like it was the right thing to do. And the community has just been so lovely and wonderful and supportive. And it's great to connect with other like-minded leaders in the space too. I agree. Charlotte, before we wrap up, Can you tell the audience a little bit about how they can find you? We'll give some links in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to connect. And chipperfieldmedia.com is probably the best place to start. You can find links to learn more about the holistic marketing system. You can also find the course on there, which I call the Holistic Marketing Roadmap. (laughs) You can also find the link to the podcast on the website as well. And then you can also subscribe to that wherever you listen to podcasts. And then I would say, yeah, connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram is the other one at Charlotte Chipperfield, where I'm the most active. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, this is Heather. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you found value in the show, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a rating on iTunes or just simply tell a friend about it. And if you're interested in learning more about my profit advising and coaching, please set up a discovery call by using the link in the show notes. All right. Thanks so much and see you next time.